Hello everyone and welcome back to Audio Talk. In our last video, I discussed that I was going to come up with a review for the digital amplifier company Desktop Maraschinos. I had mentioned it was a very special amp. I've auditioned and owned several amps in solid state, class A, AB, and so forth, and tube amps, single-ended tube amps um, of all kinds. And um, I had settled in in a fantastic custom-made single-ended tube amp, a 2A3 amp. Um, that was just pristine. I had everything custom done, the caps, the wiring, the power supply, obviously the tubes were all specially chosen and uh, really, really was happy with it. I had run across a gentleman on Audio Circle by the name of the Wind Chaser and he said, hey, um, there's an amp um, that you really should audition. I understand based on your post you have a single and an amp, so did I. I went to digital and I never went back, and specifically the Cherry Amp um, Desktop Maraschinos. Um, to prove the point, he sent me a free Class D amp uh, that was a chip amp, is entry-level amp, of course, and um, he said, just to get an idea where this is going in the last few years since you've auditioned the Spectron back in, what, 95, 96, uh, it'll give you a taste and see if you're interested and go to, go to the one that's really designed uh, optimally. So with that said, I said, sure, send me the free amp. I listened to it. I certainly noticed that it was doing some things right. It intrigued me to the point to say, well, if this is the bottom line and the low end, uh, I wonder if it's really tweaked and really done right what a Class D amp can do. Enter Tommy O'Brien uh, with Digital Amplifier Company. And after a few discussions with him, he and I connected. Uh, I said, all right, I'll buy the desktop maraschinos. Let, let's get a, a, you know, a fair price going and, um, and I'll buy them. And I did. And as soon as I plugged them in, they blew me away. So a lot of interesting comments I have based on that amp and we'll get into that. First, I'm going to show you some of the different amps that they come, that come in the desktop maraschino line and talk a little bit about the different power supplies and pricing. And then we'll get into the design philosophy that Tommy uh, employed on this. Okay. So this is the Black Cherry Desktop Maraschinos. Um, look handsome, got a red light at the top. You can actually get that in blue if you want to pay a little extra money. On the back side, balanced connections, uh, five-way binding post, pretty standard, right? And there's a DIN plug you can see on the outside of the amp. That connects to the power supply. I'll take you through. This happens to be the Cherry Amp, which is the highest level desktop maraschino. Uh, he's tweaked it out a little bit, costs a little bit more money. We're not really going to get into that, but I just wanted to show that that's in the line. And of course, that's the back. And this is the power supply that goes with all these amps. And there's a 48 volt power supply that gives you 250 watts per channel at 4 ohms. The one I got is a 60 volt power supply. This is the back side that gives you 400 watts into 4 ohms. And the price for the 250 watt amp and the 48 volt power supply is. 2500 and the one that's king the 60 volt 400 watt the one i have retails at 4000 tommy's always running sales check his website um, but you can see the din plug on the back here plugs right into the into the amp and it comes in a stack of three you just put this at the bottom base and um, off you go so let's get into some of the secret sauce tommy utilizes in his design and kind of talk about why this amp sounds so special, truly. So let's start out with his design principles. His design principles are focused on sound quality first. He really takes a over-engineering approach to his design. He kind of takes a BMW philosophy where you do everything three times greater than it really needs to be uh, to ensure that um, you got plenty of headroom in a sense. And you know, like a BMW car, it's tested on some very difficult tracks and handles really tightly and car is extremely balanced to be able to handle the most dangerous curves. Um, his amps are designed uh, to be over-engineered, to, to design that amplifier for far greater than would ever run into, you know, based on your source material. So when you play your source material, it's going to handle it with ease. So it really comes across when you listen to the amp how effortless the amp is. Uh, so he also believes that measurements and measurement tests count, um, but even more important, as much as he's into measurements, and if you've seen him on social media, you'll, you'll know that he's definitely into measurements, um, he feels listening tests are even more important. At the end of the day, no matter how good it measures, it has to sound good. He even is known to take 
um, some compromises, slight compromises in measurements to make sure the listening experience is right. And, um, you know, that's part of a secret sauce. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. These amps sound amazing. So he definitely looks at those four things when he, when he uh, starts off on his designs. So let's talk about the topology. Tommy takes an unconventional class D approach to his design. First of all, he's programmed the chip inside the amp himself. It's proprietary. It's based on his decades of experience. Uh, and that's the first piece of the secret sauce. Um, he employs minimal negative feedback uh, that allows you to have less phase changes than other designs. The minimum negative feedback allows the amp to be more stable in the upper registers. The mid-range and higher end is pristine. Excellent transient response with no high frequency noise or ringing. This allows the amp to provide current on demand. Plenty of reserve. Current is there when the music demands it and is really critical piece of the, of the design. The switching frequency is much higher than conventional class D. It's super fast. It really helps enable the huge bandwidth. It goes from zero to 100K hertz. Huge amount of bandwidth. And um, the switching frequency does that. And one of the tricks is he does it with, as mentioned earlier, the minimal negative feedback. Very rare and part, definitely part of the secret sauce. The huge bandwidth up to 100K, you know, of course 100K isn't audible, but providing the bandwidth in inaudible ranges helps the bandwidth that's audible. And um, it's apparent when you hear how seamless this amp is. Okay, let's move on. DC coupled, okay, this is huge for the bass. There's no phase shift introduced. It's flat to zero hertz. When you listen to the desktop maraschinos, everything impresses you because it just sounds like music. But if I wanna focus on the bass for a second, I've never heard detail authentic bass um, out of an amplifier that is the desktop maraschinos. It's just very special. I have, as you probably know from my reviews, I have a Spatial Audios X3, um, and I've had Spatial Audios open baffle systems. Um, I've had this amp power multiple versions of those speakers, and it is amazing in the bass. X3's got its own subwoofer with an amp built in it. Uh, I love to see it powered by the Cherry amp, actually, but um, it, you know, of course, is really respectable on that particular speaker. Um, but bass in this amp is really, really, really um, amazing. So he's got a patented and proprietary modulation technology. Again, decades of research. It's flat across the audio band. It really allows for smooth transitions. It's seamless in its sound, um, top to bottom, just incredibly smooth and seamless. Um, of course, what that gives you is excellent control of the speaker. It's all about controlling the speaker. Uh, and this amp does an amazing job in that. You know, couple, you know, kind of tied to that with the high wattage. Um, not only is the modulation technology, which is in the uh, in the analog domain on this amp, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This amp has plenty of headroom. As I mentioned, my King version of the DTM is a 60 volt power supply, 400 watts. It's got plenty of headroom, and it has no issue handling anything you you throw at it. Any source material you put on there, it'll handle it with ease. You know, it's interesting, 400 watts, right? And if you think about my speakers, the X3, it's 97 dB, right? Um, and of course, it's got its powered subwoofer, as I mentioned, but the mid-range goes down to 90 hertz. Um, you know, the AMT driver, um, awesome driver. So those two drivers are 97 dB efficient. And you might say, oh, you can put a 5-watt, 10-watt, single-edited tube amp in there, 25-watt class A. Whatever you throw at it at low watt, it should be able to handle it perfectly with 97 dB. But it's amazing what the over-engineering, as I mentioned to begin with, uh, what that'll do for you. With that much headroom, when I put my amps on, I'm not pushing that amp at all. And the sound that I'm getting out of those X3s is pristine. Um, a lot of the magic that I'm hearing through that X3 is attributed to this amp. It is amazing. Um, I've talked to some very well-respected designers in audio, and they haven't heard anything quite like this amp near its price range. And um, certainly um, the extra power is a blessing. Love it. 
Okay, so I also takes a hybrid approach, right? So he's got an analog input along with the digital circuit and the output. And um, really just, you can't get the level of performance that time he's getting in this hybrid approach in just a conventional class D system. The efficiency is slightly lower than class D, than typical class Ds, right? But it's still much more efficient than a class A. Um, class A amp, I've mentioned I've had those in the past. You, might even have one now. Gets really warm, heats up the room a little bit. Um, this just gets slightly warm to the touch. Um, it's definitely a little warmer than normal class D amps, but um, uh, just a little bit warm. Just You just notice it. Another feature that this amp that I really like, it has auto sleep. So after eight minutes, if the amp doesn't sense a signal, it'll go to sleep. Um, if you were to put you know, a song back on, a tune back on, it immediately, microseconds, flips on. You don't even know it was off. It's how fast it goes on. But it's a nice feature. When you're not using it, you can keep them on all the time. They go to sleep. They don't draw any power. They wake up instantaneously. It's great. Um, I'll add one more note on the balance output. Of course, that allows up to four times more output than single-ended designs. And um, another benefit and part of the secret sauce. So just to conclude, uh, just wanted to mention that this amplifier is just amazing in, in what it does. It, it, you know, it does nothing in a sense because it just lets the music come through, adds the gain and attenuation to uh, put as loud as you want, and it just doesn't lose anything. Um, when you talk about like a black background, right? Well, I had my custom made single ended amps and they were really designed well, and I thought the background was pretty black. When I put the cheering amps in, they were dead silent. 400 watts all the way up full volume, you can't hear anything out of the speaker. <laughs> no noise. And when the music comes on, it is a black background. Um, it's amazing how well they assist in imaging. <clears throat> the tonal accuracy, as I mentioned, since it doesn't really have anything to get in the way. The timbre when I listen to my music um, is just spot on, uh, dynamic, as much as you could ask for. And for this money, um, it's just something that's really, really special. Uh, if I was going to give it one con, I would say aesthetically, you know, it's rather Spartan in its looks. Uh, when you live with them, you come to appreciate the design and the look, actually. It sounds so good that, you know, it's just part of their character. Um, instead of lugging around an 80-pound tube amp, Class AB, Class A, which I've done in the past, um, these are, like, very lightweight, under 10 pounds. Um, there's no stress on your body. Um, when you fire them up, they sound fantastic right off the get-go. Uh, they don't need a half an hour to warm up. Um, you don't have to roll tubes. Um, there's just not much that can go wrong with these amps. I've had them maybe close to a year and a half now. No problems with them. Um, just another paradigm in amplification. Really, it, it, it's really hard to get your mind around it. You can say class A, class A, B, class D, but this is a prime time amplifier. It, you know, it's a hybrid approach. Um, there's really nothing like it on the market. If any of you manufacturers are listening to this and you think you have an amp that can compete with this and its price range, please send it to me and I'd be happy to review it and give an honest review. Um, but I've listened to many amps and um, I have not found any amp that can touch this amplifier for near this cost. And I'd probably say double the cost of what it is. Uh, it's truly, truly a special amplifier. And um, my hat's off to Tommy O'Brien. Uh, in my next review, I'm gonna look at his DAC. He calls it the DAC DAC, Digital Amplifier Company DAC, D-Day Converter. And that DAC coupled with these amps, uh, pretty special combination. That DAC deck is at the same level of this amp uh, and really is amazing. So looking forward to, to putting a review together on that one very soon and share that with you. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed the review on the desktop maraschinos. Give me a like, <clears throat> subscribe, and I look forward to giving you the next review on Audio Talk. Until then, have a great day. Take care.